Founded in 1991, it is the oldest continuously operating organization within the Liberty Republican movement. Our mission is to return the Republican Party to its ideological roots of limited government, free enterprise, and personal liberty and responsibility. If you are a Republican and you would like to help us accomplish our mission, we encourage you to speak with one of our representatives in the back following the forum to get information about our meetings, times, and locations. Even though the office for which each of these candidates are running is legally a nonpartisan office, we believe that each seat on our Lake County School Board being occupied by a Republican who adheres to the principles enumerated in our Constitution and Bill of Rights, the principles which this organization promotes is just as important as any other office in the land. With that said, we are very grateful for the participation of each of these registered Republicans running for the nonpartisan office of Lake County School Board member. So you know, this is not their first interaction with us as an organization. Each of them, each of these candidates this evening have signed and submitted both our RLC Liberty Compact and an extensive questionnaire which we provided and we're grateful to them for doing so. I would like to read our Liberty Compact so you know what they signed. I pledge to the citizens of this state and to the American people that as their elected representative I will work to restore liberty, not restrict it, shrink government, not expand it, reduce taxes, not raise them, abolish programs, not create them, promote the freedom and independence of citizens, not the interference of government in their lives, and observe the limited, enumerated powers of our Constitution, not ignore them, period. And then each of them sign their name to that. And again, we are, we are grateful for that. <coughs> Now, here are the rules for tonight's forum. And we are going to be a little bit formal tonight. Um, you know, different people have different ideas about how to do these things. We chose to go with more of a formal uh, program, but we are going to be asking a lot of audience questions. And, and then after the meeting, I'm assuming the candidates are willing to talk with members of the public and, and take any direct personal questions you may have um, for them. So here are the rules. For the purpose of time and decorum, we will not be permitting direct questions or comments from the audience, other than a selection of those submitted prior to the beginning of the program this evening. All questions will be directed to the candidates from the moderator. Come on. Okay? The candidates will be given 90 seconds with which to provide their answer to a question. 90 seconds. By the way, just so you know, none of the candidates, there's only two or three people in this room that have even seen the questions that they're going to be asked tonight. So nobody's had access to, you can feel for them, I don't know, because they're going to, it's going to be uncomfortable, I, I imagine, I know I would be, so. Um, my plan is to alternate between questions from myself and those submitted by the audience prior to our, our starting. If you do not hear the question you submitted or something similar, uh, as I said, please feel free to uh, talk with the candidates afterward. Please do not interrupt uh, during the meeting with comments or uh, overly uh, exuberant responses to, to answers. We, we want to be polite and not make them overly uncomfortable. Although, nothing wrong with that necessarily. But. <laughs> okay, so then uh, we will allow two minutes each for an introduction 
And then at the, after the questioning period, you will be allowed two more minutes each for concluding remarks. Um, we will not be allowing, uh, say for example, someone in their answer to a question mentions you by name or alludes to you in some way that you know they're talking about you, uh, we're not going to allow you extra time to respond. However, you are free to respond in your next answer or to use your concluding remarks or if it's after someone else's introduction, you feel free to use that time to respond. Okay? So, to review, two minutes for introduction, 90 seconds to answer questions, and two minutes for conclusion. Candidates will, I already said that. We are very grateful to Jan Smith, one of our members, uh, for acting as a time to If you don't know Jan, she's very mean. <laughs> she will be uh, blasting you if you go too far over your time. And everybody knows I'm kidding. Five seconds over, there's a trap door underneath each of the All right, and as I said earlier, I ask the audience to please be considerate of our candidates and other audience members by not interrupting and, be, and refraining from any overt displays of pleasure or displeasure with their answers. Um, please forgive our formality, but we want this to be fair to our candidates and to everyone, and to everyone giving their time this evening. We can have some fun afterwards. All right, candidates ready? All right, let's uh, begin with our introductions. Ms. Luke, since you're the closest to me, I'll allow you to begin. Good evening. Um, I'd first like to thank you guys for being here. Press start. She hasn't pressed start yet, so I won't start. <laughs> Technology. This is what it's like when an administrator goes into your classroom. I'm just telling you guys, it always happens. All right. Um, I'm Stephanie Luke. I'm the current chairman of the school board. I sit on the, in the District 5 seat, which is a representation from Eustis and Unitola area. Um, I have served two terms um, on the school board. This would be my third term being elected if um, the voters so choose to do that. I will just speak briefly on three things that I'm probably the most proud of and I can share. I have collective board members in the audience, so um, as a board, over the last eight years, we have not taken on any debt. Um, we have not borrowed money to build schools or to repair schools. We have done that as a, a pay-as-you-go model, which has allowed us to reduce the debt from over $430 million when I first came into office in 2012 to less than $160 million remaining. Um, equates to about $35 million annually when we started to about $19 million annually now. And what that does is it frees up money in our capital fund so that we are able to fix schools, so that we are able to better prepare them for our students. Um, we have recently added athletic fields to our five-year plan. That was something that we kind of was hit or, hit or miss we could, when we could afford to fix them or when we had a, a terrible issue, we could maintain them, but it wasn't something that we planned for. We've included play, playground equipment, we've included um, science labs. There's a lot of things that we get to cover now because we have a healthy fund. Um, because of the debt reduction. We have 14% in our fund balance. Um, when we started, when I started on the board, it was 2.5%. So we have increased that balance. Oh, good grief, I have to talk much faster. We have increased that balance to a healthy fund balance, and our insurance balance is also very healthy now. So that's probably the number one thing that this board has been financially responsible with the taxpayer dollars. Um, in addition, we have increased our CTE, which is our career tech education programs, and our acceleration opportunities. And we've, all, we've also provided additional opportunities for students who need credit recovery. Um, I will save the rest of this for my closer because I have four seconds left, but I talk really fast, so I'm glad these are being videotaped. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I hope I don't take 
two minutes. But I'm Jim Miller. I was on the board before. There's a different time that is very frustrating. We weren't fiscally sound. We didn't have any money. We had a lot of debt. And then um, I lost by 103 votes. Um, <coughs> now I'm back. I'm try it again. It's going to be a lot more fun. Uh, fiscally sound. We have a, a great board, a great superintendent. I'd like to be part of that. If you, if you all, I think, have uh, one of my flyers. If you look through that, I've had a lot of experience with uh, helping kids. Kids are our future. Uh, they're our country's future. Their future is our future. So I want to make sure that we do as best we can by them so that it's successful and good citizens. Good evening, I'm Louis Lopez. Uh, are we ready? Extra time. <laughs> <laughs> the protection of our nation's freedoms begin in education. I am running for school board to be a watchman for the student from the war indoctrination that tends to go against our family values and the liberty of our nation. I oppose critical race theory. As American Puerto Rican native, I will not allow a theory to put the three races in me to debate who is best. My over 30 years of international community leadership experience, ranging from Puerto Rico to Japan, to Latin America, to USA, and also Canada, can be an asset to the school board between my roles as a pastor, bishop, former military spouse, former early childhood teacher, and a successful mother of two professional daughters who have attended Florida public school, I believe that I have what it takes for this office. My experience as a nonprofit administrator can also benefit the school board budget. We pastor can do much with little. This race is not about popularity or a fundraising contest. It's about the destiny of our nation at the hands of today's students. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tyler Brandyberg, um, and I am running for Lake County School Board District 2, uh, which is Leesburg, Lady Lake, and Fruitland Park. Um, I'm a lifelong Lake County resident and graduate of Lake County Public Schools. Uh, three of the eight schools in my district that I would represent, I did attend and graduate from. Um, after Lake County Public Schools, I went on to the University of Florida, got my degree in finance in 2017, and returned home to work for Brown & Brown Insurance in Leesburg, uh, specialized in primary and property liability and workers' compensation insurance. Um, in 2020, I was elected to serve on the Lake County Water Authority and served on that board until earlier this month, um, June 3rd to be exact, uh, when the governor appointed me to fill a vacancy on the Lake County School Board. Um, so I've been in office for about two weeks now, uh, learned a lot in a couple weeks and getting up to speed. Um, we've got a great board superintendent, they're doing some wonderful things and, and looking forward to the opportunity to serve in the interim and uh, try to earn your vote to keep it moving forward. Uh, so why am I running? I'm running because Lake County gave me every opportunity to be successful growing up and just looking to make sure that the next generation has the same opportunity to do so. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and look forward to your questions. All right, first question from the moderator. This is related to academics. I'll give them a second to think about the question after I read it, and we'll say when they're ready. Okay? Here's the question. Do you support schools giving primary emphasis to teaching basic skills, that is, reading, grammar, spelling, traditional arithmetic, history, the arts and sciences, rather than social or political activism or psychological matters, and why? Uh, 
Jim will be starting. Jim, I'll, I'll repeat the question to give you another second to think about it. Do you support schools giving primary emphasis to teaching basic skills, that is reading, grammar, spelling, <coughs> traditional arithmetic, history, the arts and sciences, rather than social or political activism or psychological matters, and why? And let me see if I can. Stand by, we are experiencing technical difficulties. Uh, Mr. Miller will be beginning this session. Thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, that's part of my platform, a teacher's role and reinforcement, and it's also curriculum transparency from the government, the scientists. And I do. Uh, uh, teachers are to equip the student with skill and not to indoctrinate their minds with ideologies. It's skill are reading, writing, mathematics, arts, sports, and music, among others. Sexual ideologies, gender ideologies, critical race theory are not, is not a skill. There's a reason why they are called theories or ideologies. Okay, Mr. Brandenburg. I'll keep this one brief. Yes, I agree with everything said there unequivocally. Um, we're fortunate to have a great governor in the state of Florida that has pushed a lot of these things from Tallahassee. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, a lot of curriculum is handled at the state level. Um, we follow very specific state statutes and have state approved curriculum to avoid things like this from happening in our schools. Um, so I fully support um, those initiatives, and th there's no better way to sum it up than, than education, not indoctrination. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And this is why I don't like to go last. I was like, who gets to go first? Because I think that Florida is very blessed by the governor that we have and the information that he's put forward in regards to specific curriculum and guidelines in regards to what we can and can't say in our elementary schools. But I can tell you from a teacher's point of view that um, we have we have tons of standards and very little time to teach. And so all of the teachers in Lake County schools that I've had the privilege of being in their classroom or, or having my own children in their classroom are very focused on what we need students to know and be able to do that are related to basic, basic subjects versus ideology that has been spoken about. So, thank you. Well, thank you. Now we'll address an audience question to our candidates. Uh, this one is, um, was submitted this evening, and here's the question. Under the Florida Education Finance Plan, Lake County is currently 64 of 67 counties in per student funding. How would you address this? <coughs> And this question will begin with Ms. Lopez. Sure. Uh, that's part also of my platform, uh, audit the efforts. We need to audit the efforts, where the money is going, where we're investing the money, and it's getting done. Uh, the money is using, it's being used for what it was sent, and why we're 64, we need to check back. Why we're 64 if Right now, we are in a growth community of, uh, last year it was 2.68 growth in Lake County. 
We are the 17th largest uh, county in Florida. And there's no excuse why we have not moved forward in getting more funding for our students. We will look into it and where is, is the money is going, why uh, we're not receiving enough funding, uh, and that's a part of my platform. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are the 19th largest school district in the state based on student population and by last count, 64th out of 67 in funding per student. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. Um, I think Mr. Mathias has done a fantastic job over the last decade championing for this cause. Um, I've seen many spreadsheets that are as long as this table that show how that formula tends to work um, and where we, where we tend to do well and where we tend to do not so well. Um, I had about a two hour meeting with the CFO of the school district the other week. Um, he really shed some light on this process for me. Um, the biggest area where we're, we're losing at this point is what's known as the district cost differential or the DCD, which takes cost of living into consideration um, for the, the county level. Um, and pretty much where we are, we are too big to uh, qualify for the smaller county subsidies, yet not as powerful as the Orange Counties, the Miamis of the world, um, to get the other funding. Um, so where we're going to continue to work on these things is in our tax base, uh, try to continue to grow industry and get our tax rolls up in the county, uh, continue to understand ways in which we can improve our standing in that formula. A lot of the categories are restricted funds, um, so those are intended for very restricted things, uh, but the base student allocation in the DCD is where we can make up the biggest difference. Uh, we are currently at a 0 .9807 uh, DCD ratio, which equates to about $6.6 .6 in annual funding that we're losing out on year over year. Um, so little things can be done to improve this process. Um, good work has been done. We just need to continue what we're doing to get back where we need to be. And I can add on to that. Um, some of the things that we have done, we are currently 65th, actually, out of 67 in funding, just with the newest update to our um, our budget and the FEFP, the Florida Finance Program for Students. But um, we have we have fought and received compression funding for the last three out of four years. Um, to the tune of about $3 million that fluctuates. Um, so that's trying to make up for the over $6 million annually that we miss out on. It's something, it's not everything, but it's certainly something. We are definitely in violation of Florida statute, which requires equitable funding for all students. Um, the second thing I can tell you that will help improve this is if we continue to improve our schools. And so one thing that I can tell you I am most proud of in this district, and I know our superintendent would join me in this, is that we have increased our graduation rate to over 90%. And so when we can advertise that over 90% of our students are graduating from high school, we attract businesses and we grow our economy. And so that's one way, you know, I hear a lot that, you know, I don't have children in school or schools aren't necessarily important to me because that's, I'm past that stage. But I will tell you that the most impactful thing we can do for Lake County is make it attractive because our schools are amazing places for their kids to be. And that's what grows industry. So they definitely go hand in hand. Um, the other thing I can tell you is just the community awareness. And so Leadership Lake um, always is very good about having education days. And anytime we can get in front of a group of people such as yourselves and tell them we are 65th out of 67 in funding and we want great schools, it seems that the advocacy can grow. And that's exactly what we need to really make an impactful change in Tallahassee with advocacy.
Here we go. Do you oppose school-based health clinics which may perform examinations, provide immunizations and medications, and dispense birth control devices and abortion referrals without parental consent or knowledge? Please expand on your answer. And this question will begin with Tyler Brandenburg. So no, again, the, the governor's office has made it very clear in state statute what we can and what we cannot do. Um, and moving forward into the 2022 school year, um, no medical services of any kind can be provided to any students without parental consent. Um, I, I fully support parents being involved and able to make those decisions on behalf of their students. I think it's important that we have certain services available at the school level, um, obviously uh, safety and overall uh, wound care, but then beyond that, uh, mental health, psychological needs, whatever that might be, with proper parental consent, all for it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put her on the spot for a second, but Jensen, will you stand up? This is my 16-year-old daughter. I'm a mom, and that's, that's what I'm going to tell you guys. <laughs> I, think, I think that, again, we're going to, I think Governor Stannis is going to get a lot of credit here this evening, um, the protection that needs to put in place, but I can tell you that if there weren't such protections in place, that that is who I fight for, and the decisions that I make. Um, come back to her and her brother and her sister. Um, so as a mom, I can tell you that I would, would never be in favor of anyone giving any of those things to her, so. Well, I don't have any kids to stand up, but I do coach a lot of kids, and, uh, and I do mentor a kid every, every week at least for time. So I do, I am involved, even though I won't say I'm eighth grade. But, um, yes, let's see. Oh, no, no, we're not going to have all that stuff dispensed. We can't. I'm sure there's no, all kinds of liability if we're trying to do this stuff, but it's just not, not going to have it on Lake County, Florida. It just isn't. Or in the state of Florida. So we're in a really good spot in a really good state. I'm glad to be here. The school should not make decisions on my children's behalf. If they're my children, they're my children. Parents are legal, uh, legally and morally bound to their children's well-being. Withholding information from parental or legal guardian puts in jeopardy the wellness of a child. So I will not support uh, uh, a clinic taking decision uh, over my children. Thank you. Our next question comes from the audience. Um, there were three kind of similar questions. I hope it's not too much to deal with in one question, but I'm going to try to combine these three questions. Um, hopefully you'll be able to handle it. So here's the first. The school superintendent, Governor DeSantis, and this, brought, this brings up something I wanted to make sure we and I speak for myself and the audience, I believe, we want to know your philosophy. So we know Governor DeSantis' philosophy, so please make sure that you share what you believe and what your philosophy is, even if there were the Socialist Democrat government, governor that we almost had. So uh, please keep that in mind. So the school superintendent, Governor DeSantis, have prohibited CRT in classrooms. How will you ensure that rogue teachers will not insert progressive CRT, Project 1619, so on and so forth, class curriculums, uh, assignments, tests, or videos shown to students? Because we are aware that there are some liberties and freedoms for them to insert uh, other information that they are able to find that I didn't understand correctly. Um, similar question, do you support, uh, some might disagree, but do you support transgender women participating in women's girls sports? And um, how will you address sex education from K through 12? These are social issues is why I'm saying they're similar, although I, I realize they may vary a lot. But uh, this will begin with Ms. Luke. Is that correct? Okay. I don't know. I thought it was Oh, I lost my train of thought. 
You hit, you hit a nerve, and I know I only have 90 seconds, so I'll say this fast. She's, I'm so glad she's here tonight. She's, this is my first campaign, and she's really been old enough to participate, but she, um, this is funny, she was on the state championship softball team for Eustis High School last year, and she has the state ring. And so, that's my mom heart, um, I will tell you, but she, um, she's 5'2", and she doesn't weigh very much, and she bats in the four hole. And I will never, ever ask her to stand next to a man and try to compete with that. And so, again, apart from Governor DeSantis and everything that he's done nationally to, to be recognized for his support, I, that is another area that I would fight, regardless of what state I lived in, because I have two daughters who are amazing athletes, and they were born with God-given talents that are nothing like a man's, and that was by design. Um, the second thing I will say is we have a great process in Lake County right now. Um, I do believe that when issues arise, first of all, similar to when my kids come home and tell me about something, if it, a video in particular that was shown, it is my right as a parent to come in and ask the material is reviewed if it is found to be anywhere near associated with CRT or the critical rate uh, or uh, project. I don't even know what it is. That's terrible because we, we do not believe in it. Um, then it is removed immediately, and our administrators are aware of that, and our teachers are aware of that. Our teachers, I'm going to tell you guys, our teachers are dedicated to teaching the standards in their classroom, and so um, we have a really good process in place for that. There was another part of that question, but I don't remember what it is, but I may be out of time. Okay. Okay. Um, personally, I, I, I do agree with Governor DeSantis. So it's hard not to agree with him on all that stand. All right. House Bill um, 1557, and I didn't see anything wrong with that at all. Um, as far as sex ed, um, we do, I think, have it in middle school. Parents should, but not all parents do, and not all kids have parents. So if you don't tell them about it, they're going to get pregnant because nobody told them about that to do anything else. So we have to have some something there. Um, I think parents should be able to, and parents who do do it right, do it the right way, can use it. Can out kids out, no problem. Uh, but if, if, if you it's not run wild, we're going to have more kids, you know, um, hopefully they won't board. But anyway, uh, you know, I absolutely agree with what we're doing. And there, if it happened, we had a rogue teacher, it wouldn't last long, is my impression of what I've heard. Um, and there's been a few instances where it really wasn't, but it was my opinion, and it was corrected right away. So, um, I don't remember all three of them, I think I touched space out, but, um, oh, oh, yes, oh, I just heard someone, I think the NCAA said that they will not allow um, transgender to compete unless they're transgender before the age of 12. But then that, you can't use an 18-year-old guy to compete, but if they're <coughs> transgender, I couldn't believe it was on ESPN, I heard uh, Alyssa Velasco. Honor Pastor, uh, we must stand as a caregiver of their children, but above all, caregivers of their soul. If we don't stand as a caregiver of their soul, uh, we're going to lose little by little a nation. And we must stand, we cannot stay no more uh, uh, silent. And Biology has made a difference between a lion and a lioness. They call it the king of the jungle, the, the male, and the female lioness. Biology already made a distinction between one another. What I'm trying to tell you is that we, if biology science already accepted the difference between one and the other, because of the sex that they carry, we must understand that we cannot allow uh, that in our classroom. I took notes just in case I forgot one part, so I think I'll hit all three of them. Um, I spoke with the superintendent this morning on the CRT issue just to make sure I understood where the district stood at this point um, and agree lock and step with the superintendent and, and the governor for that matter. Um, but she shared with me unequivocally that we have a policy that CRT will not be taught in our classrooms and that no student should ever know their teacher's political affiliation or beliefs. Easier said than done, but the policy has been set at the top, um, and the top is enforcing that policy. I think the best way to know what's going on is, like Ms. Luke mentioned, uh, what the students bring home and what they say goes on in their classrooms. And when you hear that happening, 
you can then intervene if, if you've got an issue and then get to the bottom of it. Um, uh, that's that. Step two, transgenders in sports. Yeah, um, I, that should not be happening at, at the, the high school level or at any level for that matter. Um, the sanctity of sports is an important thing uh, for students to be able to excel and go to the next level. And if we rob students of the opportunity to truly excel here in athletics, we could help them get to the next step. Uh, that, that does very uh, poor things long term. Uh, and last up, K-12 sexual education. Um, again, I can't believe we have to have policies on certain things on the K-3 level. Uh, I think that's crazy. Uh, but beyond that, similar to other comments have been said, at the middle and high school level, I think you need some form of curriculum uh, that is parent approved that parents can't choose to opt out of. Uh, but absentee parents, um, we, we, can't, we can't legislate people to be parents, but at the same time, we've got to make sure those students have what they need to, to be successful and move on to the next level. Um, and with the remaining time that I have, uh, the public review policy is starting up now, and the parental choice program with library books is starting as well. Uh, I'll get into that later. So there will be answer to that question. I'll take the moment to editorialize a little bit. This, you know, you can tell from their answers, I think it, the importance of us as parents and grandparents being aware of what our kids and grandkids are being taught and being closely watching the, the materials they bring home or don't bring home, having that open communication, and then reaching out to these off officials and letting them know when there's something alarming to you. So, okay, next question. This is a moderator question. Kind of a little bit in the same, similar vein. Do you support the fundamental right of parents to direct the upbringing and education of their children? If yes, as a Lake County School Board member, would you be supportive of charter schools and homeschool parents as well? And how would you show your support? And this uh, session begins with Mr. Miller. Uh, I actually for charter schools, but with for charter schools, we'd be really overcrowded right now. Um, we have a lot of good charter schools in Lake County, uh, and a few that have gone away, but for the most part, they've done, uh, especially in South Lake. And it's interesting, the only one to build where it's really crowded, and that's where we wanted to build, so it works out pretty well. Uh, we are building our own now, and we're pretty excited the schools that we're building. Um, If you're supportive, how oh, will you show your support? Uh, people who homeschool, yes, they should uh, be supported. Uh, parents, need, if we have parents who want to take that on, by all means, that's what we're looking for. Uh, our problem is we the ones that don't want to have any of this. Here, you take and leave somewhere. Those are the ones that I hear about from the teachers that are retiring early. And they uh, just yesterday in all these, she said, the parents are involved anymore. It's really frustrating. You can't teach a kid. It, it, some of them can. Anyway, it's, it's very difficult for me to teach it because of that. So, uh, yes, those who are interested should be able to make all the decisions. Uh, I did as a parent. Uh, I know. Uh, oh, no. I don't think it's all that going on. I'm sorry. I do support, uh, as part of my platform, school's choice, uh, we need to stop putting boundaries in, a, in student progress. We must allow the parents uh, for the well-being of the teacher, of the students, where the kids feel or according to um, the what they have. Oh, according to how they their research is the word. According to the parent research, and they think that the school is not appropriate for the dish, for the for the student, or for whatever is the reason, give the parent the opportunity to pick the right school for the well-being of the student. Uh, yes, yeah, similar to uh, Ms. Lopez's comments, I think school choice is incredibly important. I think adding competition to our schools only makes us all better. Um, iron sharpens iron, and when you've got more uh, providers in the area, it naturally only forces you to, to step up your game to make sure you're doing what you need to do for your students. Um, so how, how would I support that? Um, I would look into charter school opportunities when the district can't adequately meet the needs of demand. 
I think it's no secret that we have a lot of growth coming to Lake County, not just in South Lake anymore, uh, but more in North Lake County, uh, with Whispering Hills and Hodgins Reserve in the Leesburg area, and then with everything that's happening in the Wolf Branch area in Mount Dora. Um, a lot of growth is coming. Our capital plan is ready for a lot of it, but not ready for all of it. Um, so if we find areas where we've got increased demand that we can't meet, uh, the only thing that, that makes sense, in my opinion, is to, to look for a well-qualified charter school to come in and help meet that demand, and again, um, help us better our ways as this public school district here in Lake County. Okay. I literally wrote down, however, the competitiveness makes us better. So I will just reiterate that. Um, I will tell you that as a board and by statute, there's actually very little we can control in regards to a charter school as long as they're fiscally sound. We pretty much have to approve them. We have been fortunate in Lake County to have partners who have come to us and asked where would be appropriate to build, where do you see overcrowding in your schools. I will. The caveat, I will tell you, is that they don't have a requirement to remain open. And so I know that when we make decisions about where to place charter schools, in the back of our mind, we always have to keep in mind what happens if that charter school closes? Where are those kids going to go? And so it is nice to have the partnership and it is nice to be in an agreeable state with charter schools because there, that isn't the case in a lot of districts um, throughout the nation, actually. Um, however, we always have, they are our students, right? So whether they go to a, a charter school or whether they go to a public school, they are Lake County students and it is our job to make sure that we have a place for them. And I know our capital plan continues to address those needs as it comes up. I will also just tell you guys that I wish that we were judged the same. And so what, what unfortunately happens is some of our charter schools don't have the same requirements in regards to accountability and testing that our public schools have. And so we get grades and, and we get you know, kind of run through the ringer when our, our, our private charter schools don't have the same accountability, not just in testing, but also in their building codes and the amount of money they have to spend to make their buildings um, adequate for children. Some of them operate out of our state community college partner buildings, and so when we talk about safety and security, those are always things that are on our minds. But we have been supportive of them, so I'm going to stop. Thank you. Uh, each of you addressed the second question, or the second half, very clearly. So just for clarification, I just want to get an answer, yes or no. Do you support the fundamental right of parents to direct the upbringing and education of their children? Are you saying you want to be? Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. yes. That's kind of a given, but I just want to get that out in the public realm. Okay? All right. Make sure I didn't skip anything here. Oh, I did, see? All right, audience question. I like this. Where do you stand on the career and technical education programs? And this will begin with Ms. Lopez. Where is that? We do not, uh, we need those vocational school and uh, to address the technical school because uh, Right now, that is, that is uh, the media is taking over. Uh, we need the new generation to be equipped with the right tools to take care of whatever of the new challenges of the nation. Because we're accountable, we're part of this nation is being informed. So I do support uh, technical school. I do uh, vocational school, and I do uh, support uh, funding for this. Um, because not everybody wanted to uh, to go to college. Many people wanted after this, wanted after graduating from school, they really looking to go to a workplace. And we should uh, work to help those uh, students to embrace their dream. I think our mission statement at the, the uh, school district, and then I'm going to pick on uh, Leesburg High School in a positive way as well here. Um, so our mission statement is to help students excel with individual opportunities at the next level, uh, whether that be college, career, the military, or entrepreneurship, or anything else along that way. Succeed at life at the next level. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of CTE partnerships. Um, college was a good path for me, uh, but that's not the right path for everyone. And given the job market, the, and where we are today, uh, there are so many jobs in high demand that with the growth coming into the county and other places um, can make a very lucrative career very quickly and be in it a true career for life. Um, so just to touch on a few partnerships we already have in place, and again, Leesburg Construction Academy uh, had 30 kids about five years ago, and now they've got a wait list of over 300 kids trying to get into the Construction Academy. 
Uh, we just completed our third Habitat for Humanity house and continue to do great things in that program. We've recruited a second teacher this year and continue to grow from that standpoint. Uh, partnerships with Emory Riddle, Eustis High School in South Lake on the aviation side. Uh, we're instituting some unmanned drone programs at Leesburg High School and a few others. Um, in the Leesburg area, we're looking at more partnerships in aviation. We've got Leesburg International Airport. Uh, there's a lot of great um, employers out there that are high demand for aviation mechanics and everything else along those lines that I think we can offer to our students. Uh, Lake Tech has been a great partner. Lake Sumter has been a good partner and becoming an even better partner with some leadership changes over there. Um, so, no, I am all in favor of CTE more and more and more. Um, the Power Academy, we're trying to bring back to Leesburg High School in conjunction with Lake Tech uh, to work on the alignment program um, and more opportunities along the way. So, yes, CTE all the way. So I can just expand on what Mr. Brandenburg just said, and I would encourage you guys to grab one of these. I have them with me this evening. I think Mr. Matthias has some of them as well. This is a list of the current CTE programs that we have at all of our high schools and middle schools as well, and there are some that are not on this card as well. So the, the Aviation Academy is one of my, my favorites because it took about three years to get it off the ground, and there's no pun intended. That was funny. Um, but it started in a conversation with the city manager in Umatilla, and they have their airport out back as well. And then it has started as a club with volunteer members, and they're actually building an airplane that they plan to sell to then use the dollars to purchase another one so that the students have the, the ability. And to grow that program, the partnership with Embry Riddle, we now have a program specialist that's dedicated to the aviation programs. Um, super, super excited about that one. The other two, he mentioned the Construction Academy at Leesburg High School in partnership with the community. So what I can tell you is that we were able to get appropriation dollars in addition to our funding, which is critical for us to grow these CTE programs with being 65th out of 67 in funding. Um, the Romac, Romac Clubber Supply got together with the Builders Association and all of those contractors and builders wrote letters of support for us that we then took to Tallahassee. So they appropriated funds to start these academies. They've done the same for an HVAC program in Umatilla and a construction academy now at Eustis High School as well. And the last thing that you have to give me time to say for me, take 20 seconds from Jim. Okay, um, the Tiberius High School Teaching Academy was also something we have a critical shortage area. Jim just spoke about just teachers in general on burnout, COVID has really done a number on public education in general. Um, so we have we have we have the teacher the teacher high school teaching academy at Tiberius High School. We just recently had a signing day where we have six graduates that plan to go in their teaching academy and um, come back and work in Lane County schools. Okay. <laughs> yeah what she said. No, uh, <laughs> state statute and other directives that we have at the superintendent level and at the state level. 
Um, so while I'm always in favor of grand dollars, anything along the diversity training or anything along those lines is more in the indoctrination space instead of the education space, I'm not in favor of, no. I would agree. Um, I believe that's why we have separation from state and federal government. Um, and I can also tell you that we tried that. We didn't try it, but the federal government tried it with Race to the Top and Common Core several years ago, and we all know how that went. Yeah. <laughs> Grants are always good, but it's going to take our, affect our governor, they can keep it. So uh, I, I, I believe in less government, and grant that is going to put us in jeopardy, our go, uh, local government, we don't need it. Thank you. All right. Another audience question. Concerning your professional background that would potentially present a conflict of interest in school board dealings. And we'll begin with Ms. Luke. Um, I am currently an associate instructor at the University of Central Florida in the College of Education. That's my real job, I say. Um, so I know there are some opportunities that we have that I have never actually been um, in conflict, but to be on the, to err on the side of caution, I would rescind myself from the vote. So just as an example, so that you can see um, what I'm talking about, we had a dual enrollment agreement on our agenda this past Monday night with the University of Central Florida. And so I abstained from voting so that there would not be any potential interest by me being um, in, in gain, some type of gain from students attending the University of Central Florida. So that's the only background that I have. I am an educator. I do consultant work. I don't do consultant work in Lake County. So that's it. I'm a commercial realtor, and I did sell some of the Lake County School Board property. It's uh, right next to the village. It's uh, 20 acres. Uh, that was the egg farm for Baysburg High School, and uh, they got $6 million for it. I didn't get out of commission. I got a commission from the buyers, um, and it was just a flat fee. It wasn't based on, and you know, it was not what I'm used to getting out to deal that way. But, um, but they paid me. They paid full uh, praise value, and there was no commission paid by the district, so they got full, full price for the property. And, and so I didn't. Really, it's sort of conflict, but it wasn't. And, uh, <laughs> I doubt I'm going to have that situation again, but if they did, I would not take a commission. Uh, and I do have some expertise in commercial real estate, so they you can help with some of that stuff. That would be it. No, I don't have any. As far as I know, I, I, I don't know politica, political favors no, to no one. Um, I'm running on my own reputation. Um, uh, so far, I don't have no uh, conflict of interest. As I mentioned earlier, I work for Brown on Brown Insurance in Leesburg. Um, we do have some business dealings with Lake County Schools and other local municipalities. Um, I have never made a dollar off the Lake County Schools account. I'm not tied to it in any way, but my employer is. Um, so we are very well versed in the recusal process and making sure that I have no influence on, on any dealings that could directly or indirectly benefit my organization. Um, so there is a conflict, but not one tied with me directly, just with my employer. Uh, we've alluded to this a couple of times, but I'd like to get this out in the public uh, venue also. Do you support a pay-as-you-go philosophy of budgeting? Pay-as-you-go being defined as financing expenditures with funds that are currently available rather than borrowed. And we'll begin with Mr. Miller on this. I certainly do. That's kind of why we get back on the board, because we're doing that. It's going to be a lot more fun than when we weren't doing that. So yes, I absolutely support that. Yes. I do support uh, that shows a good stewardship. Uh, we are modeling to the students, so we pay as we go. Um, 
So yes, I, I agree uh, with the other two. Um, like I said earlier, I've got a finance background and um, a business focus in my quote-unquote day job. So yes, I'm always in favor of uh, writing checks that you can cash um, and making sure that our growth is funded with dollars that we already have. Um, and if, our, if we can't fund the growth, again, we've got charter school options, we've got other options that can fill that need. Um, and we can go from there. But the, the capital improvement plan has worked extremely well. We've done a great job paying down debt. As Ms. Luke uh, alluded to earlier, our reserve fund is up to 14% our fund balance. Um, so our CFO has done a fantastic job in moving us in the right direction. So I'd like to keep it that way. I agree with that model. And I can, since I have a little bit of time, I can tell you that um, with the new administration, our superintendent has never even brought forward um, a recommendation for us to um, borrow any money as well. So she is 100% on board with the direction of the current school board. And, and it does take the direction of the school board. So it's been, it has been a pleasure to work with the, the, my, my colleagues on the school board because we all are very aligned in that vision and it's what makes our capital plan so healthy for the growth that we are getting ready to experience and have experienced over the last few years. Thank you. Uh, another audience question. I have a feeling this may be a student's question. Okay, where do you stand on uniforms? And I'm going to when I was a child, you know, in Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, I don't think uniform is necessary in the school. Uh, that brings it to the parents to more spending right now. With the inflation that we're experiencing, we don't need more burden on the parents. And uh, I do believe uh, uh, they, they, the parents have the right also uh, to exercise the right over the children uh, where they are using uniform or they're not. Uh, so um, uh, that's my point. Yeah. So I, I'm not in favor of uniforms at the district level as a district-wide mandate. Um, our dress code policy, I believe, has been recently updated. I think Ms. Luke can help me on this one if I get off path a little bit. Um, but to where the local schools administration and their parent SAC um, can choose to look at uniforms at the individual school level, um, but the district will not be included um, in trying to do things at the higher level. I think individual freedoms um, are important in students' expression and the ability to wear the clothes that they already have. Um, given the times that we're in is, a, is another good point. So no, I, I, I'm not interested in the uniforms it, uh, blanketed across the district. We do have a policy that's very fitting for each unique school's um, desires. And this SAC committee is your school advisory council, and it's made up of teachers and parents and community stakeholders. And if there is a desire for the school to have school uniforms that goes through that advisory council, it's very well vetted. It's, it's open to the public to give comment, and then they bring it um, they used to bring it before the board. We've updated the policy now that if a school advisory committee follows that protocol, that they can be a uniform school. It, in the past, the school had to come and request to opt out of one of our policies because they had uniforms. And so we thought, what a tragedy that they've gone through these motions to have a, a uniform in place, and then they have to come and ask to opt out of the policy. So we've updated that procedure, and it's working very well. It's, it allows our schools to um, accommodate the needs of their students and their community and what's important to them. Um, I also will tell you guys, just in regards to dress code updates, another thing that our superintendent has put into place that is one of the things that we're also very proud of is the student advisory council to the superintendent. So she has put together a group of seniors from each high school that advise her on issues related to students. And so what a great voice to have at the table. We get to hear how the decisions that we're making at the board are impacting our students in, in a real real setting. And they updated our dress code this year to make it more current and to make it more um, even enforceable and some clearer definitions. And so we've gotten some positive feedback from our students that are in the school setting from that advisory council to the superintendent. That may have been directed at me, but uh, 10 years ago I ran uh, some school uniforms for, for all. Uh, I learned an error in my ways, and I, I think it should be a site based decision. Uh, the school wants to be like my bird, they can be like my bird, they don't want to do any of that. They, to, they do have to maintain the dress code that the kids just came up with. I thought that was a great way to do it. Um, and uh, when it gets enforced, uh, that's a different story. But uh, uh, I like what's being done now. And it, would, it really should be site based anyway. I really force site based decision making anyway. So I've acquiesced on that issue. All right. Uh,
due to the number of audience questions that we received, I'm going to switch to all audience questions now, so we can try to address as many of these as we can. Uh, please discuss your experience in getting a diverse group of people to a consensus. And uh, I did lose track. So it would be Ms. Lopez, I believe. So, uh, can you uh, the experience that I have in bringing a diversity of people into a concern is the question? Yes. Well, as you know, I'm Hispanic. I pastor a multicultural, a bilingual church. I do that all the time. I try to be empathetic to the culture and uh, without losing sense of, of, of what is the truth. Uh, that's why I also speak into my platform and my platform multicultural approach is about uh, we want people that come to the United States to embrace our American culture. But in order for them to embrace our American culture, we need to provide sources, resources for them in transitioning. Uh, Transitioning, sometimes it could be a language barrier. Sometimes it, 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 it could be culture the way that they see things. And I have bring uh, a, a, a different background of ethnicity into consent in focusing not in our uh, diversity, but in what is uni unite us. Yeah, so th this is a great question, and I appreciate it. Um, I, the, one of the main reasons I'm running for the school board is to bring a different perspective to the board. Um, I think it's no secret um, that, no offense, but I'm, I'm the youngest one up here by a, 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 a slight margin, um, and a, a different background than what's already on the board necessarily. And I think that's really valuable. Um, if we've got five people up there that are all saying the exact same thing and not uh, challenging things in a productive way or getting other input uh, from parents, from stakeholders, from um, teachers and all alike, uh, we're going to lose sight of what's going on um, and really miss some opportunities to improve. Um, what experience do I have in doing that? Um, I'm a graduate of Leadership Lake County. Uh, Lake County is becoming more diverse and going through that program. Um, exposed me to a lot of different backgrounds, the ability to learn different points of view. Um, also just recently graduated from Leadership Florida, um, so Leadership Lake, but just at the, the larger level with representatives from all 67 counties. And boy was that an experience, um, one that I really valued and learned a lot from. I also serve on the board of directors for New Vision for Independence of Lake and Sumter Counties, uh, which is focused on low vision support services throughout Lake Sumter and the villages. Uh, so again, another perspective of people than the other groups. And lastly, I've served on the board for the Leesburg High School Booster Club for the last five years uh, to get more of a parent's input and also in, an athletics input and how important those are for our students. Uh, so I try to be involved. I try to surround myself with people that don't think exactly the same as I do because I believe, again, like with school choice, competition only makes us better and to challenge our beliefs and make sure we're looking at things from all fronts. So I'm going to start off by telling you guys, you guys that I am a math teacher by trade. And so I work all the time with people that don't like the subject that I teach. I force people to do math. And so that's, that's one, thing. One, one of the experiences that I've had with that. Um, obviously serving on a school board for eight years um, has brought in some various people. I, so the, the two gentlemen that are with us tonight, Mr. Matthias and Mr. Nod, and I have served together since 2014. Um, we have not always agreed but we absolutely have respect for one another, the respect to listen and to learn from one another. I've learned things from both of these gentlemen and the passion that they bring to the table. Um, I would say that one of the things that I am most proud of is the cohesive nature of our board. And so one example of that would be the question in regards to pay as you go. I don't think there's a person in Lake County that pays attention to public schools that doesn't know that the desire of the current board is to pay as you go. And so it brings candidates forward with the same philosophy because of the bold nature that the board has had. So there is, um, again, I do think there's always room for improvement and I appreciate the discussion that we have in the board, but I think that the unity and the respect that we have for one another has, has really been the successful the result of the, the, the financial state and the academic state that the district is, is in today. And it has allowed us to appoint the superintendent that we have as well. Um, so, thank you to both of you. In the mid-90s, Florida went through, all the counties had to come up with 
comprehensive plan. It took us two years to do it. We had different elements, including the conservation element. Um, I was chair of that group, and we it was very diverse. You really had three. You had the developers who were for growth. You had ag, which was at that time we still had orange trees and stuff. Well, and uh, then we also had um, the green people, and, and somehow you had to bring them together. And there was uh, it was quite a chore. As a real estate broker, it's my nature to bring people together because if I don't, they don't get paid. So I'm always trying to find common ground and bring people together. Um, and I thought I did a pretty good job of that, somehow we got it together and we got it passed. We've been, basically, it hasn't changed since, so we did a pretty good job of that thing. Uh, I, two, I was on the Nagro uh, leadership late class. I, I was had the president of the Lisa Chamber at the time, so they had to take me. Um, and, uh, and I was also in part of the Nagro uh, Hall of Fame. So I've been around a while, I guess. but. Uh, I'm still active with kids and, and community, and I deal with parents uh, and, and deal with high school agers too. So uh, I bring a lot of wisdom. I have a lot of. Uh... All right. Um, I'm going to combine these two. How many years did you spend in the classroom and public education, K through 12? And as this focus of election is about Lake County children, what have you done in the past five years to enrich the community for the children, and what are your plans to? So, if you don't have education background, answer the other question. Oh, um, Mr. Brandenburg, sorry. So no, I do not have any direct education experience, um, and I don't say this to be flip in any way, but I've got 13 years experience in Lake County Public Schools, uh, and I graduated in 2013, so, so nine years ago, so still relatively fresh, um, and still involved in our local schools from that standpoint. Um, but what have I done in the last five years? Um, like I mentioned earlier, I've been on the Leesburg High School Booster Club board for the last five years, and gotten very deeply involved, again, at my alma mater, Leesburg High, uh, since Principal Mike Randolph has come in. Um, he's been such a catalyst for supporting our community and really raising the perception of what we're doing in Leesburg and all that we can be. I think it's no secret that the Leesburg area schools are uh, lagging behind our other districts in the county. Um, and if we can get those schools right, uh, we're, we're right there in the A district and all the, all the good things that happen there. Um, and uniquely with District 2, we only have one high school. Uh, we've got seven other schools, two middle schools, and then five elementary schools. Um, but one high school that everyone follows to in our district. So trying to do everything we can to increase opportunities there is of the utmost importance because, again, it only makes us stronger. Uh, so the Leesburg High School Club board there, um, and then also I've served as the president of Leesburg Lightning for the last seven years, uh, so collegiate summer league baseball at Pat Thomas Stadium. A lot of our kids throughout the county have come through the Lightning over the years and played in the Florida Collegiate Summer League, uh, so getting the opportunity to look at them uh, from an athletic standpoint after uh, K-12 has, has been a really enriching experience for the community. Um, I am a lifelong educator. I graduated from the University of Central Florida in 2000 and came back and started working in Eust at Eustis Heights Elementary School. Um, I transitioned to a district office position about seven and a half years after serving in the classroom, um, but that role was to support teachers in their understanding of mathematics and how to teach it to kids. And so I got acquainted with all of our elementary schools, a lot of our teachers, um, and a lot of our administrators. Um, I moved into a higher administrative role the district office for about a year. I was in charge of teacher evaluations and principal evaluations. That was fun. And then UCF had an opening at the College of Education. So currently at UCF, I teach elementary teacher candidates how to teach mathematics and how to teach science, and I also coordinate internships, which is their experience that they have in elementary schools prior to graduating and becoming teachers. Um, in addition to that, I um, am getting my doctorate degree currently, and I can just tell you guys that after this summer, I will successfully be a year two candidate um, in educational leadership. And so that's been, that's been, it's made it a little bit more challenging this year to be a board member and a parent and a UCF an instructor. Um, I will also tell you guys that I serve as the parent varsity represent, representative for Eustis High School softball team, which just translates to I work the concession stand a lot, and I coordinate it a lot. Um, 
but that help, definitely helps set a vision. And um, I also have a professional development meeting that we run for recent graduates from the University of Central Florida Lane County teachers, and I can't talk to you anymore. <coughs> Well, um, my dad was a teacher, he was a high school science teacher, um, retired from that, then got into real estate. Uh, I coach, with, uh, oh, and my grandmothers, both my grandmothers were teachers. So it's in my blood, so I coach, that's how I feel that need uh, to teach. And I've been doing that for 32 years in soccer, youth soccer and baseball. Um, I've been involved with the community so much through the, all the years in, in so many ways. And uh, I still go to the Florida Chamber events. In fact, uh, on the 28th, I'm going to Sandy Moore, who the, runs the Leesburg Chamber, and I'm going down to the partners to earn some of the, the Florida Chamber's building on down, at, uh, down towards Tampa and uh, to learn how, what can we do then? Get, make the situation the transfers, transition from learners to earners the Florida Chamber with this all new programs. And I was going to invite Sandy and take her and then turn it. She says, let me check my calendar. And she says, oh, I'm presenting there. Okay, so the program she started with second graders. And so she's going to be presenting in the Florida Chamber event. Uh, at least I'm offering her a ride. It's going to pay her way. She's already going to present. So I'm really proud of what they're doing. I was chamber president in 90 and 2000. But uh, it's in really good hands with Sandy Moore. So, and still connected to all that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lost all this. I my Well, my experience is mostly ministerial. I have 30 years of international ministry of multicultural, but I also I have my uh, I was a BPK teacher in Mandora and used this uh, for three years. I always working with the community, with the children especially, and also I'm the director of Protect Our Children project in Lake County. We, uh, we are uh, working around not only Lake County, but we work in the state, uh, working with the children's needs. Obviously, Lake County uh, is our priority because this is home, but I always looking for the opportunity to impart my life my time into the children's life. All right. I've been told that, but we only have one question left from the audience, so I'd like to, if you, you'll bear with us, we'll get everybody's question uh, included. Um, I'm going to, I'll give you the exact question, but I'm going to frame it in a little bit different way. Do you support having a paid police presence on campus and securing the building with one entrance? So they're obviously wanting, um, do you support having a paid police presence on campus and securing the building with one entrance? That's very specific, but I just take a quick moment to address school security. Um, yes, I will tell you guys, actually, I was the, there was a 2-2 split on our vote whenever we were talking about whether or not to enact the Guardian program, um, and I was the, the vote that made the Guardian program come into place in Lake County Schools, alongside <coughs> my partners that are here. Uh -huh. And in regards to one entry rate, I haven't had a chance to think through this, and so I don't want to speak out of turn, but I do think that just thinking about the different high schools that we have on campus and the different um, academies that are in different places that saying one entrance might limit or prohibit the way that we do things, but I certainly would be interested in and am always interested in making our buildings as secure as possible. So I know that um, we have, we currently have a policy where every door is locked and everybody has to come through the front entrance and be buzzed into the front entrance. There's several things that we've done that I know I don't want to get into the weeds here because we're being videoed and I don't want to give it all away. So we are 100% in favor and have um, enacted procedures in Lake County Schools to keep our kids as safe as possible. And I do support that. Uh, you, you know, uh, especially with what happened in Texas, uh, yes, I, uh, we, and I think we're doing a very good job. We uh, passed the 475 
almost three years ago to hire our schools to pay for the deputies and pay for um, mental health counselors, not counselors who just do scheduling, but mental health counselors. And as big as these schools are, our elementary schools are a thousand, almost a thousand kids need at least one mental health counselor for that many kids. Uh, maybe more, but at least you've got one. It's, 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 it helps the ones that really need it. So, uh, I support what they're doing. I support what they're doing. Uh, and I'm still going to continue. <coughs> I do support any procedure that keep our kids safe, but I do believe in the Guardian program that is in place, and I believe that we should expand it uh, to the teachers, and we should expand, so expand it to personnel, uh, to other personnel in the school, as longer they are regulated to the Guardian program. I'm glad this one came up. This was going to be what I talked about in my closing remarks um, with school safety. Um, so yes, I am all in favor of, of paid school resource officers on each of our campuses. I think that has been a worthy addition to not just the, the middle and high schools, but also the elementary schools with unfortunately what we've seen in school shootings over the last several years. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with our school safety and security team at the district a couple weeks ago. Um, and one of the things that was brought up was hardening our campuses and how we can go about that uh, from a practicality standpoint. We all want our students to be safe. We all want to make sure we've got SROs and guardians on campuses to do that. Um, but the question has come up, for example, on no climb fences at our schools. Sounds fantastic in theory. Uh, but as I was sitting there with the school safety team and our director of operations, or excuse me, school operations, Mr. John Carr, um, he said he got a quote for no climb fencing. It was $300 a linear foot, and we have 38 miles of fencing in Lake County schools. Um, so there's a point where we can be protective, and there's a point where it just isn't practical and it available for our budget to handle it. Uh, so making sure we're doing what we can from that standpoint. Safety is always going to be number one priority, but making sure that we're doing what we need to from the dollars and cents side of it as well uh, to make sure what we're doing is, is effective and also cost effective. Um, and expanding on that a little bit, I also have the opportunity to be with our sheriff the other day uh, to talk about school safety and you know, those partnerships, um, and he did endorse my candidacy for this seat. Um, so he is a huge proponent of being sure he's in our schools, and I'm a huge proponent of making sure school resource receptees are in all of our campuses to keep our students safe. Thank you. Okay, now for, we're going to allow the two minutes each for concluding remarks, and I believe if I'm correct, Mr. Miller, uh, that falls to you to start that session. Well, I'm going to be brief. Um, their future is our future. Uh, <coughs> kids today are the future of our country. They absolutely are. I feel like this is the most important job there is because they are our future. Yeah, we got to do things right so there will be a future for them, but we got to get them right so they can do it when they can their turn to care about them. Um, I feel like I have the life experience and the, the wisdom to, to do the job. Way too we have that thing to hand it out. Thank you. But uh, you can see that I, I think I'm very well qualified to do it. And I'm anxious to do it with the, uh, the board that we have now. I'm running for Leesburg District 2, but I'm not a city person and a county person. My commitment is to the whole county. My work is all over the county, not only in Leesburg. My six endorsements so far, including Representative Anthony Sabatini, is a seal of my integrity and my character. I am the only one who stood up for parental rights in front of the school board in the middle of the pandemic. Unlike other candidates, I have stood up for students without making a, a, a financial profit nor running because I need a job. I have an accent that is on my tongue and not in my brain. I am the only one here who has presented a platform and not just a resume. My resume is my two daughters, successful daughters that came from uh, Florida Public School. My platform education with an accent emphasizes on student readiness for the workplace and values that protect the liberty of our nation in my effort to be 
be a, a blessing to our local school, I will also be pledging more than 20% of my annual salary back to the student. I just want to start off by thanking you all again for coming tonight. Um, the moderator's questions and the panel, or the, excuse me, the, the crowd's questions were fantastic. I think we got through a lot of issues, and I think for the most part we all agreed on many things, which I think is really important. Um, the fact that we've got four quality candidates up here running for these two seats. Um, I'm going to keep this part brief. Um, what I would say is, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the governor did appoint me to fill a vacancy in this District 2 seat a couple weeks ago. Um, I had his trust, and that's something that I take very seriously. And I think that shows in, in the answers to the questions that I'm, I'm locked in step with what he's doing and understand how important parental involvement is for our students and our community moving forward. Um, and like I mentioned at the end, I picked up the sheriff's endorsement the other day. Um, so between the governor and the sheriff, I think we've, we've got a good understanding of what we need to do in this county. Keep kids safe, keep parents involved, and keep all the rest out of the, out of the system so our kids can learn. Thank you again for the opportunity. Um, and I get to close, and I'm actually going to take a minute to be a, be a current board member rather than a candidate. And so you all have entrusted us for the last four years with a three-quarter millage increase. And that has allowed us to do so many things in regards to safety and security for our, for our children. And so Mr. Brandenburg alerted to the, um, the cost associated with hardening our buildings and providing safety measures for our schools. And we couldn't have done a third of what we have been able to accomplish over the last four years without the additional dollars that are associated directly to mental health and school safety and security. And so this is going to be on the ballot along with the four of us and, and my and the four of us. And anyway, what I'm asking is that you would consider re, um, re, refunding the three-quarter millage. Um, if, before you leave tonight, I have a flyer that talks about what we've been able to do because I certainly couldn't talk about all of it in 90 seconds. But we have been able to put a school nurse into every single campus for Lake County Schools. We have been able to put a mental health liaison on every campus, a school psychologist. We are trying to stop the problem before it even becomes a problem. I was able to visit some of our mental health liaisons on elementary, middle school, and high school campuses over the last year just in an effort to educate myself on these dollars so that we can be good stewards of your money. They are doing amazing work. They see kids on a daily basis. They connect families and kids with resources that are children, not the children of you, not your children. Not my children. These are not the children that we are typically concerned with. It's the children from the society that is not participating in supporting their kids in school. And those are the kids that we get to meet and get to touch their lives before they have an opportunity to come in and, and do an act of violence that none of us could ever even consider happening to our children. And so please take a minute to look at this. If you have questions, I know Mr. Dodd, Mr. Matthias, and myself would love to talk to you about this three-quarter millage and how important it is to our schools and to the safety and the security of our buildings and for our students' needs. And so thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve our students in the last eight years. I love this position. I love it. I love having an impact on Lake County Schools. And I can honestly say that, that I have a very vested interest in these kids as well. Thanks. Uh, it was not an easy position to be in, not knowing what you're going to be asked, but uh, you, you did a very great job. I hope Mr. Brandenburg won't mind my uh, alluding to a, uh, as a fellow old guy up here, uh, I remember a famous debate of Ronald Reagan and Walter Mondale, I believe it was, and when Mr. Mondale pointed out uh, <laughs> Mr. Reagan's advanced age, Mr. Reagan responded with, I refuse to hold my uh, opponent's relative youth and inexperience against them. So, <laughs> that was a missed opportunity. <laughs> so, great job, everybody. I hope you don't want to pick up on the other problems that I should have.